Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about why I need to be banned. Currently, I am not banned. I would expect if a ban took place, it would be Friday afternoon, right before they leave Seattle time. And the reason being, they wanted to die down. Why it's important that I am banned is so I can have standing. There is a little bit of confusion about whether or not this is a First Amendment case. The First Amendment only applies when there is a government or a state actor. A lot of the ad hominem attacks, including on a website called Above the Law, which if you look at the website is just very gossipy, screenshots and two sentences. I don't think the people there are quality writers, nor do they very much care. They're just there for clickbait. Which is ironic, given that I'm probably make a lot of you might accuse me of making this video for clickbait. So why is it important? Uh, it's important because Although the First Amendment only applies to the government, we have entities now like Google, like Facebook, like YouTube. When we talk of the elections and the Russian influence, we have very large social media entities that can censor speech, promote other speech, and impact even elections. So when these platforms decide what you can say and what you cannot say, that's very dangerous. And that is what Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, is doing with their vague policy. Their very vague policy that states if you hurt their feelings or hurt someone they know's feelings, they're going to write you a nasty letter from an investigator. I want you guys to understand the argument. The argument is not a First Amendment art argument. It's not that I would use a First Amendment. I suggested that I had some very good professors and I took a First Amendment class so I understand freedom of speech better than someone who may not have taken the class. My argument is this, the case that people are using for social media, Facebook, is Mars vs. Alabama. It's a case from 1946. There have been almost no recent cases about social media guidelines. There have been almost no recent cases about Twitter, Facebook, Google, what you can and cannot say, who can enforce policy. So while these people will always make the ad hominem attack, they're afraid to discuss, they're afraid to discuss if a company can censor content, can restrict content and freedom of speech, are they liable for that content, for all other content on the platform? Because they are regulating what can and cannot be said. Most people are very hands-off, incredibly hands-off, because they don't want that responsibility. Wizards of the Coast, it looks like they want to guide, they want to control through terms of service or codes of conducts. They want to enforce a specific behavior guideline. They will that will benefit some people and detract from other people. This is beyond Magic the Gathering. This is what's actually happening today. The First Amendment, again, my argument is not based on the First Amendment. My argument is based on the code of conduct being enforced selectively against ideology. That's the argument. 
and you're going to hear all of this. And yes, I did go to law school. And I'm not a law student anymore, although my previous channel was called New Law Student. I was making the point that historically, you need a plaintiff who is passionate, you need a plaintiff that has resources, and you need a plaintiff that's willing to take a beating. All of the great, not saying my, this case will ever become great, or there's even a case here, all of the great cases in history, and I studied them all because I wrote a paper about it, I don't know how many papers this person wrote, but I wrote probably uh, on this issue, but I probably wrote one more than her. They've had a plaintiff. And a lot of times what you don't hear about is how the plaintiff is attacked, their personal life is attacked, their business is attacked. All the great cases have a plaintiff. And that plaintiff is a sacrifice. You have very few cases about social media. You have very, very few cases today about how social media is regulated by publicly held companies. Because who's going to fight it? Who's going to fight it? This is very similar to the League of Legends. They have a players association funded by... Riot Games, which makes the game that the Players Association plays. Their current batch of players have no interest because their life hoods in this game is only two to four years on average. They have no interest in helping the future generation. So when you have such a big issue, such a huge issue, and all the, all anyone has is a case from 1946, and no one has challenged it. No one has made new law. It's because of the attitude of these people. They will laugh at you. They will make fun of you. They will make fun of the way you speak. They will make fun of the way you behave. They will say that you're unintelligent. They will attack that you're not even a law student. They will say things that are untrue that they can find easily. My name is out there. I'm not afraid. People are tweeting me with my name as if that's something I should be ashamed of. No, I'm not ashamed of my own name. Thank you very much. Here's the honest truth. You cannot change. You cannot change the law without litigation. And many times we are talking about social media here. The only cases I could find that were kind of similar were, were when people left a bad review on Yelp and the business owner sued either Yelp or the person who left a bad review. I haven't seen any cases where a company is banning a customer based on what that customer has done on a platform the company does not own, which in this case they mentioned is YouTube. For Travis, it would be Twitter, or it would be Facebook. And then for MTG headquarters, it would probably be Twitter. You have to understand that when the First Amendment was made, and the reason I keep bringing up the First Amendment is it's the closest thing that makes sense. Again, for the 18th millionth time, my argument is not based on the First Amendment. And no matter how many times you say it is, it is not. My argument is based on the simple fact that with today's social media, with the giants at Google, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, these are huge giants that can, that can impact what you see, your news feed, that can impact elections. Isn't that scary that there is a company that is trying to manage their customers and that's saying you're not good enough for us customer because of something you said on YouTube because of a video that you made in the month of January on YouTube. You're not good enough for us customer because you said something mean on Twitter. 
And without due process, without any investigation of who started what, they can ban someone for life. The First Amendment is not meant to be used against corporations. It is not. But today, corporations, it used to be in the past before internet, when the First Amendment was written, they didn't have nearly the same, there was no social media. Freedom of speech meant something very different back then because the government was the one who was most likely going to oppress you. Today, it's these large companies. We currently don't have any law that says a large company like Wizards of the Coast cannot ban me a customer for life because they disagree with something I said on YouTube, a platform they do not own. Isn't that scary? For us to get law, there has to be a plaintiff. And that is why I'm hoping they ban me. So I have standing. Now, if they are smart, they won't. I'm going to go ahead. I'm making this video before I have heard. And it's really 50-50. If they don't ban me, I'm causing all types of trouble for them. And I know I can't get banned. If they do ban me, this is such a fascinating case. If you are a legal nerd, you can under hopefully you understand what is at stake. We don't know the answers to some of the most basic questions about social media and how companies can regulate social media and freedom of speech on social media. We don't have case law on this. We don't. So, maybe it's time we get some. And in every great case, there <laughs> is a plaintiff. And that plaintiff takes a beating. That plaintiff takes a beating. And they will use ad hominem attacks. They will attack the way I look. They will attack the way I speak. They will attack that I'm not even a real law student or I have not been a law student. They will attack my educational background. They will attack every little bit, but they won't address the argument. And that is what is at stake. I don't want to say that like I'm doing this out of altruism. If this is case is what I believe it could be, maybe a 1% chance of getting some case law on social media, it would be worth absolutely so much. It would be worth it's crazy. It is crazy when you think about a company with a code of conduct on social media hiring investigators to go on social media, to join private Facebook groups, to make a list of everyone in this private Facebook group so they can be banned from playing a game where they are the customer. You have huge companies, huge companies out there bullying and abusing, absolutely abusing individuals because there is no case law. There is nothing for them to look at except a case called Mars vs. Abraham, Al Mars vs. Alabama in 1946 which said the court held that the property rights of a private entity are not sufficient to justify the restriction of a community of citizens, fundamental rights, and liberties. This case is from 1946. There's a few Yelp cases, but they're more about reviews and people suing for like a billion dollars because of a bad review. The whole argument, I'm a private company, 
the First Amendment doesn't apply for me to me. I can censor whatever I want on whatever platform I want. I can selectively enforce my code of conduct on any platform that you choose and every social media platform. That is scary. And as of now, I cannot find case law that says they cannot. So that's the point. That's the point. The point is, I don't have a 100% bulletproof case. I would say my case is actually relatively weak because I'm asking them to make a slight, a big change in how they see the First Amendment when dealing with large private companies that control freedom of speech. At some point, these companies are more powerful than nations. At some point, these companies are more powerful than entire states. They make more money. They have more lobbyists. You can't win unless you try. And for I will end this by saying the First Amendment was to protect citizens from the government. Because at the time, the government was the strongest entity and you didn't have large corporations like you have today. Today, freedom of speech is limited by large corporations, by employers, by if there's a vendor relationship, they can say, I don't want to do business with you. So because you said something bad on Facebook about me, or you said something I don't agree with politically, even to the point that certain viewpoints are now being censored. And this isn't me making this up. There's all types of news out there where platforms are not allowing true freedom of speech. I'm not under the assumption that the First Amendment, the First Amendment needs a state actor. I don't have one. My argument is a little more nuanced. My argument is these very large companies, they're restricting our freedom of speech. And they are banning and threatening our freedoms. And there's no nothing out there that we can look at that can tell them no. You cannot change. You cannot make change in the legal system without a case. So I hope they ban me. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.